Shalom friends and welcome to House of David. Well, today we're going to finish our uh, program in for this week and uh, I'm going to uh, finish my uh, teaching uh, that we have done here two weeks ago on the cornerstone on 1st Peter and actually we went to uh, the book of Matthew, I believe, and uh, other, uh, even the book of Leviticus. So when we connect these things together, we begin to see a greater picture. And you know what? I believe that through these um, teachings, God is encouraging, not just encouraging, but um, making us more desired for Him and for His presence, for His power in our life. Because without God's power in our life, we are powerless. But through Jesus and by the Spirit of the Lord, we can do a lot and good many things and more powerful things that we can imagine. So stay tuned, don't go away and just receive the blessings and the power of God today in your life. I really sense already the anointing on this program and I know that God is going to touch your life. Right after this message, I'll be right back here and we will see what God can do. Amen. Stay tuned. Everybody is different in a different level with God. But at certain point of time, God is going to speak to a person. God is going to speak to a person in the spiritual level by saying this thing. It's time to grow up. Amen? Amen. It's time to rise up. It's time to become better. And the way he's going to do this is going to, he's going to reveal that to each and every one of the believers, offering them this kind of a deal. So if you look again into second chapter of the book of Leviticus, you see that the fine flower really is the biggest work that God can ever do in your life because chapter 1 is the sacrifice of Jesus it was easy on your behalf you didn't have to do it you just have to accept it oil means the anointing of the Holy Spirit God is given well praises to God you can give to God at any time but the fine flower is the deal that God is working on each and every one of us and you know what? When they put, when God will put you into grinder, it's not just like you go into sleep and you don't feel nothing, and next morning you become like done, ready to go with God. Amen. Amen. No, no, it's not going to happen that way. Our grinding process comes through many means and many ways. And many opportunities that God has given us. Okay? There is, uh, 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 let me go, let me, let, let me split this in a couple of um, things that you may understand. God is grinding us in our spirit. God is grinding us in our soul. God is going to grind us in our flesh. All these three components need to go under the grinding of God. When God is grinding you in the spiritual realm, He is changing you to a Christ-like man by giving you revelations so that you may understand the depth of God. He's grinding you in the spiritual level because you are a brand new person. You are born again. You don't know many things. You don't know how to apply these things into your life. And in the spirit, God will take you deep enough so you may, 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 may be filled with the Spirit of God and continue to be filled with the Spirit of God and stay there. So your spirit must be grinded and shaped that the Spirit of God would take full control of it. Do you understand what I mean? So God begins with your heart. With your spirit to grind your heart, to change your heart, to make and melt your heart into the passion of Jesus. That you will be passionate for God. Amen. Because without this work, every other work is not going to work. Because you would not be able to be willing to give up. If your heart is not 
connected to what God wants to do, there's no way you're going to give God the chance to do it. He will have to make you do it. And that's the last thing God wants to do. He doesn't want to make us do it. He wants us to cooperate with Him and love us to do this. So first of all, He's going to go deep into your heart and let you experience His presence. He will shape your heart and make it tuned with God that you will be passionate for His Spirit and, and God Himself and His presence. Amen. Amen. Whether you know the Word of God enough or not, He will introduce Himself and He will dwell there and He will put that into grinder, which is your heart first. When that will be done, God will move to the next compartment. See, God possesses things slowly like that. By grinding, by winning the battles. First is in your heart. Hallelujah. How many of you realize sometimes that you really, like Paul said in chapter 7 of the book of Romans. He says, my heart is willing to serve Jesus, but my flesh is completely the opposite. Paul said himself. There's constant battle with that. War. In my heart, I really want Jesus. Sometimes I said, God, I really want to praise you, but I don't have the strength to do this. Your heart is crying out as the deer panders for the water brooks. So my soul is longing. Now you understand why. Because God has grinded your heart. He has put something in your heart you, that you are not religious. You are not coming to services. Oh, that's another one. You come in to meet God. You want to see God. You want to see His face. Regardless of what. Then your heart is shaped. Amen. Amen. Then God moves from that into the soulish realm. Your mind, your will, your desires. And He begins to shape that into the next position. He begin to shape that. And that can happen through other things. God said, well, do you really want me to do what I said? Yes. Why don't you put yourself into the Word of God? We have to make ourselves study, reading, changing our mindset. It's work. And it's painful sometimes, but at the same token, God is shaping your soul. Your mind, your will. Amen. Amen. Because when you are under the grinding, it's a lot of pain there. So you're going to go through a lot of painful things. And you know what the pain is? It's not a physical pain. It's just when your flesh screaming, no, I don't want this. And you're battling, but your mind and the heart says, but I need to do this. That's the hardest battle that man can find within himself. To do the right thing. Is that right? To do the right thing. And this is where God is grinding you now. See, when your heart is crying, let me tell you this. When your heart is crying for God, but you say, Ah, I don't know. I just don't have the time. I don't feel that. Sometimes we blame the devil to this. But it's not. Sometimes our own mind that is not grinded yet is resisting the will of the Spirit. But you have to go under the grinding. God is pruning. Amen. Amen. God is pruning. He is doing something. When this will take control, when this will be grinded, you know, the last thing that God is going to deal with, with your flesh. And all this way that God is moving in your life and all the things that He is doing along the way is called grinding. But with, you see, the hardest of all is not your soulish realm. It's your flesh. When God is going to conquer that, you're going to receive anointing on your life. 
When you're going to have that, God can use you in the God can use you in such a powerful way. God could send you anywhere in the world to do things and you will be able to do it. Amen? Amen. It's not that God has not given us the anointed. When God has possessed our heart and He filled our heart with His power and strength and He totally, completely took control of our heart, He already released upon you the anointing that belongs there. When God moves into your soulish realm, into your soul and mind, and grind that and take possession, God is going to release the double portion of the anointing. And He'll bring you to the nations. He'll do things. But guess what? When God is going to move on and take possession of your flesh, guess what's going to happen to you? I guess not everybody is interested in that kind of pattern because it takes a lot of price to pay, brother. Amen. It takes such a dedication that not everybody is making there. One person asked me sometimes, I don't understand how Catherine Kuhlman made it. I said, I don't even know how she made it, but she made it. But she was willing to lay her life on the grinding stone from the beginning to the end she was not turning back. Her focus was on one thing. I got to get it. Amen. I got to get it. A lot of people criticize those who have the, 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 the double portion of the anointing because God is moving and they become more radical for Jesus. When God possesses your, not heart only, but when He possesses your soul, you become to be, you becoming to be uh, more radical. Your thoughts becoming just completely Christ's. Your, your motives and, and people, even believers, they live in halfway in the world, halfway within church. To them it's strange. To them it's strange. It happened to me once when we went last year to Ottawa. I wonder, I said, why all of a sudden not many people showed up? I was shocked. It's not that the service wasn't powerful. It was powerful. It, you know, the lady called me last month. From that service, and she said, "Sir, do you remember me?" I said, "No, I, I don't she, remember." I told woman, told woman this. I, I said, I, "I, I can recollect." She said, "You prayed for me there because I had two illnesses, and they both got healed in the same spot. Now I'm completely free. I'm set free." She's a supporter of this ministry. Thank God for that too. But she said, "You know, but interesting fact was." I was asking my friends, announcing to them your meeting in Ottawa, and they said, oh, we've been there, we know, I'm not going to come back. She, she says, why? I don't want to fall on the floor. That was the reason. I don't want to shake. I, I don't believe in this stuff. It's fake. And then she asked her, did you fall on the floor? She says, no, I didn't have to fall on the floor, but God healed me. See what I mean? Amen. God healed me whether you fall on the floor or not. But what has stopped them is the manifestation of the Spirit of God when people really fall on the floor when they cannot stand. And they cut themselves off from the blessings because they're not being grounded even in soulish realm. They don't understand, they can't comprehend that God can do all things. Somebody asked somebody else, says, why people fall on the floor. He says, it's very simple. Think about if you cannot stand, you're going to fall. That's my answer. You have no strength in your legs. The Holy Spirit comes over you. You cannot, don't have no strength and you fall. <laughs> That's what it is. How else can I tell you? No, but this is not. When people are just receiving Jesus and they are born again and they stop growing, they will criticize everything. Because you have to move from one compartment to another. They think they all get it. 
to go to and finish all the schools and get all the knowledge and everything else and sit and research and research and study and research and study and study and find nothing there and still criticize the move of the spirit it's not because you've been you can research the scriptures all your life but without the help of the Holy Spirit, you will never not understand this. You need God to open your compartment here and to come in and to grind you into powder. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Without grinding, without trust in God, without understanding why God is doing and what God is doing, you will never experience this. I am the might before the sword, the tremors in the spear shaft. I craft my ways from blazes of fire storms, absorb the failings of deadened ends to render the floors I dance upon. I am the spaces between applause, the roars of hearts running through heaven's halls. I breathe the forms of light and silence, stall the course of cosmic riots. I am the glory of the giants Manaslu, Sagamatha, watchmen of the Asian plains. They yield my name, made famous through the cries of albatross flocks inflamed in Pacific fires. I am dressed in the spray of Nevada dunes, clothed in the shadows of Sahara caves. I am the light of lunar flames, fleshing the rains of Amazonia. I paint the trains of Antarctic quests, release dominion to desert Panthera. I authorize the remains of Aztec and Inca that bloom through the visions of mountain tribes. I ride the skylines, breathe the signs, ignite the paths of astronomy's eyes. I am the unheard, heard in the storms that burn on my words. I am the yearned for, I am the word. I emerge deciduous from the wetlands of your cries, rise through the moments you wake. I bring the dawns that shake the fevers from your remembrance. I am here, I am imminent. I am he who crosses the plains through which you strayed. Discover the parts extinction seared. I dust away the dried remains of tears, drain the lakes of your regrets. I wet the wells, till the soil, placate the toil, quell the rages, sow the broken pages with my belief in you. I bring the you you have never quite met. I am the desire that keeps your pillow wet. I am the heartbeat you seek when you chase after dreams. In the reachings and sighs, you are looking for me. In the body touching body, it is me you seek. In the groans and the longings, it is me you seek. In the yearning dream, in the need to be seen. In the love me, love me, it is me you seek. In the breath drop wonders, gasping hunger. In the touch of a stranger that makes you feel younger. In the books and the fables, in the this is me labels. In the is this me, is this me, in the hear me. Hear me, say my name in the touch me, find me, need me, find me in the aching pain, in the love, the music, the beats, the taste, in the heat and the need, and the need for embrace, in the colour, the gaze, the meaning, the desire, in the flame of the voice and the spirit of the fire, when you cry for more, my name you weep, I am he who waits for you to reach. I reach for you and wait When you lie half broken and awake I am the watchman of your sleep I wait and wait till the shakings cease I am the truth they call release When the darkness flares and starts to speak I sculpt the shades of daybreak It is me you seek Well, friends, I'm so glad you've been watching this telecast for uh, this week and so on, and I believe that God has touched your life. I just want to brief, uh, briefly mention one thing that uh, from the 20th, Monday through Friday, through our website, we're going to be having a fundraise event for this ministry. 
we're going to be raising funds ahead, ahead of us for the year ahead. So we're going to believe God for a breakthrough financial. And we do need your support. We, we need support from uh, different, different people and from different um, you know, ways. Because it's important for us to have that support. In order for us to stay on the air, in order for us to continue our ministry, we need to do fundraise. We, I'm encouraging people to become our partners, but it's not that uh, we're doing some kind of business here. No, it's only for the sake of the ministry's flow. Without the finances, we cannot do anything. We cannot even produce any programs. We cannot broadcast anything, and I cannot go anywhere. It has to be finances. So just put it on your calendar. If you can, log in through our website. It will be live on our website Monday night. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night, beginning on the 20th of April. For two hours, we're going to have a praise thon or I would say fundraise, and uh, we're going to have speakers and music and special things and all these things. So we'd like you to join us if you can and be a part of this event. I count on you. Our ministry is counting on you, on financial support, because without financial support, we don't want to close those doors. We don't, and neither God. And God said that uh, we should support God's work. So I really encourage you to log in and be with us every night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. It means it's going to be uh, 5 p.m. beginning um, in Vancouver and about 9.30 in the evening. It's going to be at the, um, um, over there at St. John's, Newfoundland. I just trust the Lord that you will do that. And thank you so much for supporting. It's not my best to always ask for finances, but we need to encourage people to give because people must understand, and many of you understand, that it takes money, it, it takes finances to have this ministry. We trust God, but God is also calling you to support. So thank you so much. Thank you for your support today. And I just pray that you will answer the call and you will be with us from the 20th to the 25th at this uh, fundraise event so that uh, we will continue to do what we do. Well, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your support today. And uh, well, if you need an additional prayer, just give us a call. God bless you. Shalom to you. And we will see you next time in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let God arise and he will scatter our enemies tonight. Give us a little more juicy and let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered and let the righteous be glad.
the Lord that to flourish like the trees of Lebanon. Standing in the house of Adonai, let to live House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry, is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.